We'd arrived in Norway late Friday night, and as the sun shone on Sunday morning, after the long odyssey of the previous day, it felt like we'd been here for a week. Now we're in the town of Volda, Guna's hometown, and a remarkably beautiful place, situated on the west coast. I wanted Nate to see the harbour first, so Gunnar drove through the town. Then, as the ferry came in, we made our way out to the fjord, where Gunnar's boat was moored. I'd not noticed my polarizing filter was causing a prismatic effect on the windscreen. Not good. Filled up with petrol, past the airport, and beautiful views of the fjord. I'm shooting as we drive to get a different glimpse of Norway. When we arrive at the marina, I was really looking forward to the trip. I love boats and the opportunity to cruise through Stufuren on a warm sunny day, camera in hand, is special. We were soon heading out of the marina, the sea flat calm. The mate even taking the wheel. And uh, we're just leaving the harbour and we're looking forward to a really nice day. Stufuren, again, a beautiful fjord. My favorite weather is beautiful sunshine, clear, no pollution, and not too hot. And here there's a very nice cool breeze blowing. You can put it on the message thing. Yeah. See, this is what I had to put up with. Yeah, that's the fjord is generally very deep. If I'm in the Channel Islands, we throw the lobster pots onto the seabed 30 feet down. In Norway, the seabed may be over 3,000 feet down. I went fishing here with Guna, and our lines went down 200 feet. Coffee is brewing, and Guna has picked out a nice breakfast spot. The scenery is perfect, relaxing, enjoyable, and his knowledge of the area means he's bringing us to a quiet, sheltered bay in the middle of nature. And after mooring up, we have breakfast in a charming location. The Gulas. A great thing. treat. Uncle Gunnar is getting everything moving. This is where we are, enjoying it. Just anchored up. Well, that was indeed a treat. Having breakfast, actually. It's quite a late breakfast. But having breakfast there, well, it's just very, very nice. The day before had been a long, tiring day, seeing some of the most famous places in Norway. A lot of driving and walking. So to sit on the boat and relax while taking in this unique scenery was just what was needed. As we cruise through this ancient fjord, I imagine days like this to Norwegians are no doubt fleeting. I well understand the words of Ibsen. Too soon the snowstorm's cloak enfolds, but not today. For now nature's smile is warm, 
his mood uplifting. We've all enjoyed a wonderful interlude, but all too soon it's over. We pack up and return to Volda, but it's been a great day. We then saw Guna's daughter Borgil and her husband Christian's new home being built and the great views they'll have when it's finished. After that, I was interviewed on a radio program. The technician was not available, so Nate stepped in. A daunting task for him as the program went out live. I was talking about my travels in China. Last day and the plan is to visit Bird Island and then take the ferry to Alessand and from there get a bus to the airport. Runda is famous for the number of birds found there in the nesting season, between 500 and 700,000. Puffins being the most plentiful, but there are also great numbers of kittiwakes and guillemots. Yeah, we got the perfect weather for a, uh, a jaunt along the coast. There's an eagle over there. And some white eagles. The white birds are the guillemots and kittiwakes that nest in the open. The puffins dig burrows to escape predators. Though we couldn't get close up, I'm taking the liberty to include shots of birds that I've taken on past trips, so we can all enjoy some great close-ups of some of the birds found here. The Arctic Terns. The Puffins, always alert. Sand eels, their favorite food. This one has about 10 in his mouth. Their bright beaks almost saying, I'm sharp. They always appear to be posing for the camera, especially if they have a mouthful of fish, like they're showing off. They're certainly attractive birds. The guillemots, also partial to sand eels, feeding their young. It's nesting season, so it's all a hive of activity. The shag, a relative of the cormorant, watching over her chick. The puffin protecting the burrow and the chick peering out, waiting for the food to arrive. And here it comes, freshly caught.
nearby the gulls guard their eggs. And hidden in a crag, the eider duck is sitting on the nest. Likewise the shags. Anguna told us the story of the famous Runda treasure trove, a ship from the Netherlands, the Akarendum, was shipwrecked here in January 1725. It was loaded with gold and silver coins to be used for the trade of spices in the Far East. The wreck was discovered in 1972 along with 1,100 pounds of gold and silver coins worth millions of dollars. In total, about 57,000 coins were found. By the time we got back, the rain had stopped, but it was a great trip. We had a coffee with some of Guna's friends, then set out to catch the ferry to Olesund. So we bade farewell and thanked Guna for a wonderful three days and boarded the ferry. Twenty minutes later, we arrived in this picturesque town, designed in the Art Nouveau style, with bronze statues and ornately decorated buildings. The harbour is quite a sight, with pastel painted buildings and many sailing boats. This place in the sunshine will bustle with people. But even though it's summer, the rain has deterred the crowds. So we get our last shots of a memorable three days and jump on the airport bus. Another great holiday. And many thanks, Uncle Gunnar.